and welcome back as I bring this long overdue train pulling into the station. In Perfidious Pete plays XCOM War of the Chosen. It's it's Ralph Wiggum time. We're in Lisa Simpson's class, and I'm choo choo choosing for this campaign to come to an end. We tried, Red Brown, we tried. We gave you every chance to be involved in this final mission. Every single opportunity to shed the shackles of being typecast as a hunky dude who thwarts space mutinies was given to you, Red Brown, every single one. If you wanted to become more than a Hollywood joke, you, you had the chance, we gave it to you, but you, you let it go, you let it go to waste. You let it slip through your fingers. You refused. You did not heed the call of the hero, Red Brown. When the hero's call comes, you got to answer the call. What you did, Red Brown, it's like if when the owl had shown up at Harry Potter's house with his little letter telling him to come to Hogwarts and engage in all kinds of spirited hijinks with his fellow wizarding world companions. If instead of going to Hogwarts, Harry had just punched that bird in its stupid face and decided to stay living in a Dursley's basement all through high school. I mean, he wouldn't have made it all the way through. He would have dropped out like junior year to get a job at Sainsbury's after Uncle Vernon's third heart attack. And ultimately, probably Harry would have wound up living alone in a small council apartment in Liverpool, working a job at like a local betting shop to subsidize his crippling gambling addiction. But you know, Harry Potter's fate aside, Red Brown, it's, it's, that he, he heeded the call when it came. He didn't wind up working at that betting shop in Liverpool because when the owl showed up, he answered the call. He went to be a hero. Say what you want about Harry, and I mean, mostly what he did was get a lot of his friends killed for no good reason, but still, he did something with his life. Maybe not a great something, but he did something. And take it from a man who knows a thing or two about not doing anything with his life. I mean, shit, I'm no one to judge you, Red Brown. I have not heeded the hero's call. Spend most of my time sitting alone in my house recording videos for the internet, but I digress. That's why I'm qualified to advise you on why you're making a bad life choice, Red Brown. I've taken that road, and I know where it leads, and trust me, where it leads is nowhere you want to be, Red Brown. It's nowhere you want to be. But now, it, it's too late. We gave you every chance, and instead, what are we going to do? We're going on the final mission, and we're doing it without Red Brown. Disappointed in you, Red Brown. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. So we're taking Tay Tay. Crimson Lip got us to death. We're going to get Sylvester Stallone in here. Who else do we want? Yuri Novak? Absolutely. Noe's running. Noe? Did I just call him Noe? It's a combination of Yuri and, and Novak. Like Noe Yuri? No, no. I don't know what my brain is doing. It's been a couple, couple weeks since I've recorded any XCOM, so you have to forgive me if I'm a little off my game. Also still fighting a bit of a cold, so you've got that going. Yuri's running partner, Brittany Hit Me Spears. We're gonna get her involved in this. That leaves us our last two slots. I think one of them's gotta go to Kim Kardashian. Kim's going stag to this party. Her boy, Reb Ryder Brown, he's not gonna be riding anything tonight. Kim's going home with another man, and I think that man is gonna be the sexy immortal god of war, Morgan Freeman. We should also probably revitalize a soldier. Is that what we want to do? Do we want to revitalize somebody? We have more than enough Illyrium cores, and this is the end of the campaign. The question is, then, who do we revitalize? I think let's revitalize Taylor Swift. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pretty good choice there, Pete, because, you know, when it comes to revitalization, my good friends at the University of Phoenix Online have uh, per you know, perfected a patented, or at least a patent pending, Brand of human growth hormone guaranteed to design, uh, guaranteed to ensure that you and your loved ones can remain hearty and healthy well into their mid 70s, cranking out mediocre action movies with uh, furious, reckless abandon, just like me, Sylvester Stallone. So, uh, you know, try yours today, HGH brand. University of Phoenix, HGH brand products. Hashtag we rise. By the way, the, the name of the product will be Rise HGH, by the way. Just, uh, you know, when you see it available, ask your physician about Rise HGH today. Rise HGH may be right for you. Taylor Swift, Blaster Launcher, Talon Rounds, Warsuit, Fusion Axe, Arashi. The Crimson Lipped Goddess of Death is ready to go engage in a little axe-based murder. Sylvester Stallone, your Rise HGH program. 
Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, Pete. You know, they cut me in for a percentage of the IPO on that one. And I gotta say, from a financial position, pretty good deal for old Sylvester Stallone. As far as my endorsement contracts go, one of my most lucrative to date. Rise HDH, again, consult with your physician and ask him if Rise HDH is right for you. Why you gotta assume that uh, your physician is male there? Sylvester Stallone, isn't that a bit of a sexist attitude? Hey, I'm just reading the script, man. I didn't write this. I'm just putting down what the pharmaceutical company put on the paper and told me to write, Pete. Yuri, let's give you your meat helmet and get you into battle. Shred Storm Cannon for you? Sure, why not? Plasma Grenade? I think not. Let's get you some AP rounds, perhaps. Yeah. Storm Gun, AP rounds, Shred Storm Cannon, Rage Armor. Yes, Pete. You know, I wear the Rage Suit and I do this with the meat to emphasize the abdomen. Pete. I'd like to see you get good contrast of the actual 54 pack that Yeti have working underneath this suit. Because you can see the many ripples and bulges. Uh, suit is actually only sporting like eight pack. And you know, eight pack ab is, is, is no mean feat. That's a uh, very good look for any uh, man or woman to have eight pack. But Yeti, you have the 54 pack. And I wear this just to demonstrate how much more developed Yeti's abs are. This is walking advertisement for Yeti's, Yeti's 54-pack ab uh, chest enhancement program that I too have been pimping on late night television. Turns out Sylvester Stallone, not the only one with the endorsement deal. Yeti has picked one up. You have chest expansion program uh, you can see on paid advertisement. 2 p.m. 2 p.m.? No, uh, not p.m., sorry. You, uh, Yuri is used to 24-hour clock. It runs at uh, 2 a.m. on Fox News Channel after uh, news has gone off the air. Paid programming runs uh, very late at night. You can uh, watch Yuri's paid programming advertisement. Yuri Novak Workout, only in 1995. And if you hear my mic drop out occasionally, it's because I'm, I'm still fighting a little bit of a cold, get a bit of a cough I'm working with. Okay, so, back to this. Sorry, I was just a little bit of coughing jag there. All we've got left is to do is get equip Morgan Freeman, the immortal god of war, with what is very clearly not an immortal spacesuit. I'm gonna rob you of your dignity on your final mission, Morgan. I'm sorry. Well, Pete, you've been robbing Morgan Freeman of his dignity for basically the entire campaign at this point. What's one more show? At least this time, Pete, Morgan Freeman knows that it will be the last. This bit of indignity that you forced me to suffer with this ridiculous outfit at least will be the last time I'm forced to suffer this brutal, brutal indignation. There. I've infused this material with the entirety of our viable elder DNA. Wow, you used all of it in one go at an untested procedure there, huh, Dr. Tigan? That's fantastic planning. Power levels adequate. One more look at the Shen, buffer. Watch you go over this thing 50 times. Take a breath. Take a breath because I'm assuming that you're terrified by the ghost of John Bradford that is haunting us all. The reason she's not calm, by the way, John, has nothing to do with anticipation over the mission. It's just the fact that there's a very obvious full torso vaporous apparition standing right in front of her. How come I gotta wear the suit with the mittens again, though? Initiating network connection. Give them hell. Yeah, but why am I in this ridiculous suit? Couldn't you guys just like giving me a trode net rig or something to run me in here? Do I need the full body suit? Is the entire immersion required? Couldn't I just have like a data jack or something installed? I mean, I already got that hole in the back of my head, courtesy of Dr. Tigan. Why don't we use it for something else? Actually, I think the truth is, John, that the afterlife is real. That spirit and the soul are not a myth, but they actually exist. Because John Bradford has come back to, from the dead to prove to all of us that uh, ghosts are real. But you're used to that. You did what was needed. Never gave up the fight. You saw a pulsating purple alien bunghole, and you were willing to probe it without question on the orders of a ghost. Humanity is counting on you. I feel like maybe humanity has chosen poorly 
in their selection of savior. Any reason why we're looking at this? XCOM, hello? I just wanted to give the uh, public at large one last chance to appreciate Yeli Novak's amazing meat helmet. Meat. There you go. Loading screen came in? Okay, well, I mean, the meat helmet was a beautiful thing to gaze upon, but I suppose loading screen is probably a little more appropriate for loading. By the way, that uh, that screen there cost me $85 in uh, marketing credits. I uh, had to buy ads on YouTube to make, uh, make a marketing logo come up. Meat helmet chest expansion program. Maybe... Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe they put me in the full body suit because they knew I was going through this puckered purple bunghole and they were like, eh, you know, squeezing through there is going to require a lot of lube. Let's put this suit on you because we don't really want you to get this stuff on your skin. It's kind of difficult to wash off. Let's just put you in the suit. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a generous offer. Mr. or Mrs. Ethereal, I don't want a gender stereotype. It is admittedly a pretty generous offer for us to just surrender and you'll let us come back to humanity where you'll ultimately boil us down into Soylent Green. Let me engage in the traditional human tactic known as haggling, however. You started with a high offer and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little counter offer here. How about I kill you and every other alien in this base Burn everything you have worked for these many years to the ground and laugh while I do it. That is my counter offer to you. Dash Yuri up here, have him take a peep. All right, so we have no enemies in sight. Could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. What it is is it does give us like an unrestricted opportunity to take some pretty aggressive moves here. Good to go. Let's grab the commander's avatar. Man, Sylvester, you are not quick. Running. Well, Pete, you, uh, you, you had the opportunity to revitalize Sylvester Stallone. I spent all of that time that could have been using to get me revitalized and in full fighting condition to uh, sort of promote my new HGH product. Hashtag revitalize. And instead, uh, you know, I didn't get an opportunity to be revitalized. Well, that's not good. Well, we're spotted. We got a couple of Berserkers coming at us. Is that the whole pod? Just two Berserkers? A little bit of free Overwatch here from our girl, Kim K. Tapped him right through the window. We might get subsequent shots here from Kim Kardashian, too, because she does have the Guardian ability. Yuri's concealment is busted. Let's face it, that was likely going to happen anyway. Yuri? Yes, Pete, uh, just would like to give... Uh, Give everyone an opportunity to uh, take full appreciation of Meat Helmet. What is this man doing, though? Uh, excuse me, sir. Hello? Okay. Sylvester Stallone's new HGH brand, We Rise, uh, also apparently gives you literally the ability to walk on air. Those guys are hopped up on goofballs, or possibly HDH. I leave decision to you. Decide which it is. Also, we have no idea where that unit is actually going to be now. That is supremely problematic for us. So we got a sectopod, we got a shield bear, got a shield bear. Let's see if we can try and figure out where that thing actually is. I mean, we got a 100% chance to hit it. Huh. Well, his teleportation trick is going to make this a little more challenging. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to drop a dimensional rift in this room and destroy basically all of it. Four turn cooldown. We're going to get some solid damage output from this as well. And that doesn't even end our turn. So I think what we'll do... I don't know where this man is, and I don't want to mind control him for fear of that, like, totally bugging out the mission. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to mind control this berserker. Commander's avatar cannot fail. This mind control lasts for a good little while. We picked up an ally. That's a pretty big swing. Solid damage from the commander's avatar, plus our new very own uh, punching friend. 
Now what do we got to do? Now we got to work over the rest of this trash. We got a good start. Now it's time to just keep working the trash. We don't want to wind up anywhere in this purple slop. It really feels like what we need is maybe a Sylvester Stallone grenade to start things off. Sly, where are you at? Probably too far away to get a grenade on scene. Never mind. Yeah, you know, you're always kind of quick to fire shots, you know, so that's just slow, Pete. But what I gotta say is, Sly has been nothing but amazing in this entire playthrough. I mean, when have I ever really dropped a ball, Pete? I've been lights out the whole time. Got that old proximity mine there on the ground, ready to work. And uh, we can follow that up with, like, a saturation fire and maybe kill both of these men and also possibly shut off the proximity mine. Alternatively, we could just go with a rapid fire, a chain shot, and kill the sector. I don't want to shoot that man, though. This guy's on our team. Sylvester Stallone cannot see the sectopod, huh? I'm genuinely curious how that could even be possible. Well, then... This leaves us at something of a loss. What we could do, you know what, nay, not what we could do, but in fact, I think what we will do, if we detonate a, this proximity mine with the blaster bomb, this stuff is almost entirely dead. Just let's, let's go ahead and make it happen. A lot of explosive damage. We are burning some early consumables, a little suboptimal. Proximity mine did not detonate when we dropped another explosive on it. Why the hell not? Taylor Swift has her bonus action from an ambush kill. I don't want to wind up in the purple slop, so we'll come back to that. Morgan Kratos Freeman. We do have a berserker over here that's rampaging out of control a little bit. We should probably have somebody take care of that. Yuri. We don't need to shoot that man. Everybody's real angry. Like, everybody's super anxious to shoot that guy. What did he do to any of us? He didn't. He's done nothing wrong. We do need to shoot this man. Alternatively, what we could do is just saturation fire here. This seems like the better call for Stallone. We'll go for the saturation fire, get the shred on the last of that sectopod's armor. Kill both of those guys. That puts the sectopod in very killable. Sylvester Stallone is implacable. When did that happen? Well, I mean, thanks to the rigors of my growth hormone treatment, Pete, I honestly find that uh, basically I can make the impossible possible nowadays. Uh, you really uh, underestimate the wonders of this new fitness product that we have discovered, Pete. Tay-Tay's got it. I really wish we knew where the hell that berserker was and then I could just have somebody go freaking stand next to it. But we don't know what damn tile it's in. We got a shot. Okay, hold on a second. Hear me out here. What if we use... Now, you know, it's too early to be burning cooldowns. I don't want to frostbite at this early stage in the game. It's, it's too soon for frostbite. What if we bring Morgan Freeman around this corner? Roger. And you should have a pretty good shot at the sectopod. 80%, which is not very good. We're going to go ahead and rapid fire him. Double 65 is a little bit better statistically than 180, he says, as Morgan Freeman manages to miss both shots. They've seen me. Adjusting aim. Fantastic work. That's exactly what we needed. Okay. So, Yuri, can you rage strike this man? Yes, but that almost certainly is going to break all of the game. So what if we just have you rapid fire kill him? It's almost certainly going to kill him. Now what's going on? This is this is not good. Yuri rapid fired and the ability triggered. What the hell is going on, though? Did you kill it? You did not kill it. So you must have hit once and missed once? All right. Uh, we're going to shoot at the sectopod with Kim Kardashian because I'm vastly more concerned about the sectopod than that broken berserker, although I really wanted to kill the broken berserker 
for fear that it might break the mission. You can go ahead and silent killer this man, that's fine. Brittany Hemi Spears, silent killers the sectopod finishes that off. Done. Blood trail giving us that little bonus damage we needed to close it out. No chance of being revealed. And I guess since we don't know specifically what tile that man is in, we'll take Taylor Swift and run her over here and hope no problem, that when that berserker activates, it tries to come at us and we can get a blade storm swing. I suppose there's a non-zero chance it goes for this mind control berserker as well. XCOM, not at all buggy, by the way. I mean, still, fantastically well-developed game. Okay, so our Gambit has paid dividends. Tay-Tay got the Blade Master kill. We had an idea of where that guy maybe was, and it turns out our idea was, by and large, mostly correct. That world's going to implode. This is what it's like when worlds implode. You know, it doesn't really work as the whole worlds collide thing. Yeah, I know, but... I'm not a spider from Power Man 5000. I'm not uh, an amazing lyricist. What do I know? I don't know anything. I'm just an idiot. At least video games on the internet. And that not even well. And so why don't you stand right there? And the rest of the team is going to make every effort to just eradicate you from existence. I uh, gotta admit, Pete, I don't uh, necessarily feel great about uh, destroying one of my meaty, my meaty brethren here. I, I feel like we're kindred spirits, and uh, I don't know. Yuri, how do you, how do you actually feel about this? Yes, Pete, uh, I too have reservations about destroying meat-based friend. Uh, for one thing, he's great marketing assistance for uh, my abdomina. Abdomen? My abdomen? You know, he's a difficult language for me. I am not, he's not native tongue. He's the Russian first best language for Yuri. First language, best language, by the way. I have people on team panicking because Berserker was killed. Was mind controlled. Anyway, I have reservations about it, uh, you know, doing bad things to my compatriot, Mr. Meat Helmet, simply because he is basically walking billboard for Yuri's abdomen development program. Why would they destroy a great order, subject Commander. of so much free advertising? Also, proximity mine did not detonate. This is most disconcerting. I'm at your On the plus side, we did take out two relatively vision. powerful pods relatively quickly. So it's it's not all bad. We don't want anybody near those proximity mines just in the event that they decide they want to go off, you know, later if these archons come running at us or something. That would be bad. The rest of the team is a little bit scattered out as well. Let's just advance cautiously, get our groove say. back on, team back together. We come at this one Angela Bassett style. We got to get our groove back a little bit. We got a little discombobulated in our initial encounter, mostly because of the teleporting berserker causing significant difficulties. With us not being able to tell specifically where he's at. Commander's avatar on the move wraps up the turn. Let's keep an eye on these archons, see where they go, and then we're gonna just re we're gonna consolidate here. We'll take a turn, gather turn ourselves, reload, etc. etc. Sylvester Stallone's back in the bit. I mean, honestly, Pete, one could really say that Sylvester Stallone never really left. I mean, don't call it a comeback, Pete. I've been here for years. No, 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 if you've known that or not, but I, I've been literally here for years. I, 76 of them. Kim Kardashian, you know, same, same situation here. Let's just advance you slightly. It's going to be a problem if you keep leaping through plate glass windows with such reckless abandon. You say it's not a problem, but you do that four or five times. You're looking at severing an artery. And it doesn't sound like it's going to be that bad, but when you're lying on the ground with gallons of blood flying out of your femoral artery and giant arterial sprays, you're going to reassess that situation of not a problem. Be watching your blood stain the snow, making little Rorschach patterns. You're going to be like, you know what? I take it back. This is definitely a problem. These crimson Rorschachs are, are not what I was looking for. You know what? I'm looking at the old clock here, and we're like a couple more pods. 
I think we can, uh, we can probably, what do we got? What's beyond these guys? We'll pick this one up next time. The old clock in a wall says maybe it's it's time to give this one uh, give this one a Betty bye. Also, I need to go get some tea or something for my throat because again, I'm still fighting a little bit of cold and the like super long narration is not doing fantastic things for me vocally. So we're gonna pick this one up, uh, you know, next time. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Support really does mean a lot. If you'd like to see more XCOM, you know, new videos every single day. And I've got a new campaign. Gonna do something a little bit different for our next campaign once we close this one out. And I really do feel like it's pretty perfunctory at this point. This one is gonna get closed out. I have every confidence we're gonna come in with a relatively slam dunk victory. The Ethereals... We're going to dunk on him. It's it's full press, full court press, Kobe Bryant style dunking on. And I tell you what, when Kobe Bryant's going to dunk on you, you let him dunk on you because the guy doesn't take no for an answer, if you know what I mean. If you want to see that inevitable dunking, you might consider subscribing as well. New videos every single day right now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.